The SEC chairman Gary Gensler discussed why the SEC filed the lawsuit against Ripple to sell its XRP token, saying that the firm disregarded long-standing security guidelines. Additionally, the SEC chair explained why the commission has consistently dismissed the Bitcoin spot exchange traded fund until recently, as well as the grayscale list of tradable assets and the new BlockFi $100 million settlement. We'll be talking about this and more in this video, so stick around until the end. Thanks for watching Make Money Online. If you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on post notifications. We also have a crypto Discord group where we give out calls for our favorite altcoins, and you can also win special rewards for inviting your friends to the group. Links for that are in the description. Charlie Munger, the vice chairman of the Warren Buffett-led Berkshire Hathaway, has contrasted the cryptographic forms of money with some venereal disease, adding that Bitcoin will fall into nothingness in the following century. He also stated that he admires China's decision to ban cryptocurrency, saying they did right. However, he's also encouraging that the U.S. forces a China-like crypto ban and gives admonitions about the trading and expansion of cryptocurrency. Munger proceeded to list why he would rather avoid Bitcoin, saying that blackmailers, kidnappers, extortionists, and terrorists also use it. It's beneath contempt, asserted Munger. The American billionaire, investor, businessman, and former real estate attorney also added during an interview last May, expressing his hatred for the success of Bitcoin, saying, of course I hate the Bitcoin success, nor do I like just shuffling out a few extra billions and billions and billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air. According to the American business mogul, his most recent objections were voiced during Wednesday's yearly meeting of the Los Angeles-based newspaper company, the Daily Journal Corp. He filled in as chairman for quite a long time. And now let's get back to the SEC chairman's statement about his stand on its lawsuit against Ripple. Numerous XRP advocates had trusted that with Gary Gensler being formally sworn in as the authorized administrator of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the lawsuit's premise against Ripple would be returned to and examined. However, it seems the lawsuit will keep running its present course, since Gensler hasn't shown any traces of pulling out. Since he's assumed office, he requested the court block the solicitations of Ripple to get close enough to their inside emails and communications. So once more, that's an indication that the court battle wasn't over yet. Before Gary Gensler took over as the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, he was respected as a crypto-accommodating regulator. As a result, many expected a new fabulous start for the crypto world. Gensler likewise discussed Bitcoin spot EDFs, an item that the SEC would not support. It has dismissed applications from Fidelity, Skybridge, Cryptoin, Vanek, and WisdomTree. Its most recent move opened up for public criticism on the Grayscale Bitcoin spot EDF application, even though, as CNF detailed, 95% of financial backers support Grayscale. However, it's been everything except that. The SEC chair has cinched down on several crypto organizations. In a recent interview, he's uncovered that the SEC is still immovably going after Ripple. Gensler met with Liz Clammon on Fox Business to discuss crypto, digging into several things such as BlockFi, the crypto intrusion of Super Bowl promotions, Ripple, Ethereum, Bitcoin spot ETFs, and more. He said the SEC would keep going after any crypto that it accepts as unregistered security. On what makes one crypto security and not another, he told Fox, the conceptual framework is, is the public investing money anticipating profits on the efforts of others. My predecessor, Jake Clayton, said it as well as I could say it, that in looking at these tokens, it's rare to find one that isn't doing that. So the public is investing, hoping for a profit based on the efforts of some other group. The SEC chairman also addressed the subject of regulations in the crypto business. Gary Gensler noticed that such a large number of projects in the space were not regulatory compliant. The chairman of the SEC proceeded with the idea that these ventures typically will quite often profess to be something different so as not to enlist with a commission. However, a significant number of them are securities. Under Gary Gensler, the SEC has repeatedly asked crypto projects to enlist with the commission to safeguard people in general. Holding nothing back, the anchor of the show, Liz Clayman, inquired why XRP was explicitly targeted, echoing the sentiment of why XRP and not Ethereum when the two of them sell their tokens to support the advancement of their networks. However, Gensler tried not to respond to the immediate inquiry of why XRP and not Ether, letting Fox know he doesn't comment on particular cases. Back in 2018, during a lecture at MIT, Gensler expressed that he accepts that the XRP token is non-compliant security. Gensler's conviction, which he concedes is only a conviction and will be concluded by the U.S. courts, not the SEC alone. He told his classroom that he accepts XRP as non-compliant security in light of the Howey test. Ripple keeps on selling XRP tokens while controlling the more significant stake. Ripple is a typical undertaking that offers little use for XRP without Ripple's control. By every single obvious result, the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple isn't going to be thrown out, definitely not by Gensler. 
On Monday, Gary Gensler also talked about cryptocurrency regulation and the agency's 2022 regulatory plan on CNBC. The chairman clarified that, as a rule, if you're raising money from the public and the public is in anticipation of profit based upon that promoter, sponsor, that group's effort, that's within the securities laws. And it's within the securities laws because Congress painted with a broad brush, he expounded. Gensler emphasized that investments that refer to themselves as a token are still presumably, conceivably, a security. While recognizing that better approaches to contribute, including crypto tokens and special purpose acquisition companies, are energizing, the SEC chairman emphasized our role at the SEC is to ensure that the public still gets basic protection. Gensler further clarified what is kind of old and important is this basic idea that if you raise money from the public and the public is thinking about a profit, you've got to give them basic disclosures and everything. Likewise, he was asked what he thought about the expansion and crowdfunding utilizing cryptocurrency. Emphasizing that he won't comment on specific projects, the chairman said, Crypto tokens, I will call them. Are they raising money from the public? And are they sharing with the public the same set of disclosures that helps the public decide? And are they complying with our truth in advertising? Call it the Securities Act's anti-fraud provisions. Elaborating further, the SEC chair affirmed that there are many such undertakings essentially attempting to fundraise from the public with the goal that they can back a pioneering thought, while underlining that he upholds advancement, he noted that it's tied in with carrying it into the protections regulations. Going on to add that tragically, such a large number of these are attempting to say, indeed, we are not a security, we're simply something different. I think that the facts and circumstances suggest that they are investment contracts, they are securities, and they should register, Gensler concluded. Following Gary Gensler's assumptions, this very moment represents a period during which the market doesn't enjoy investors' protections framework set up from the crypto market. This is dissimilar to what we see in Bitcoin future ETFs, which are controlled by the Commodities Future Trading Commission. Regarding the proceeding, spectators are worried that the SEC fails to address issues while they're still brewing. It may be an SEC thing, or they're just trying to use these requests to prolong the discovery stage a little further, seeing as they had earlier asked for an extension on the discovery date. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to turn on bell notifications. If you have any questions, drop us a comment, and we'll see you next time.